Hey guys, what's up? My name is Mariah. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm actually going to talk to you guys about fat loss. I feel like this is a topic that everyone's interested in. Everyone wants to know how they can shed a little bit of fat, make their muscles pop out a bit. Especially if you've been working in the gym like I have for so long, like lifting weights, um, lifting heavy, trying to build muscle. If you're trying to shed a little bit of fat so you can see that muscle, keep watching because I actually have a lot of tips that I believe can help you shed fat in a sustainable, healthy way. The first tip that I have for you guys is to continue training the way that you've been training. It's actually awesome to do strength training if you're trying to lose fat because strength training actually holds on to the muscle that you already have while also losing fat at the same time. So that is ideal for fat loss. My second tip for you guys is to add just a bit of cardio. The reason for this is because if you guys want to lose fat, you're going to need to be in a caloric deficit, which means that you're actually burning more than you are consuming. This actually isn't as extreme as it sounds. So the two types of cardio styles that you can start incorporating into your workouts, number one, HIT, and number two, LISC. HIT stands for high intensity interval training. So an example of HIT would be sprints on the treadmill. So that's what I would do if I was to do HIT. I usually prefer LISC, but if I was to do a HIT workout, I would do 30 seconds on the treadmill at a speed of like 10 or 11, and then go on the sides of the treadmill as a complete rest for 30 seconds so you're not even moving your body for 30 seconds and then back on 30 seconds on the sides for 30 seconds so I would continue that for about 10 minutes and then you're done with your HIIT workout so LIST actually stands for low intensity steady state which I freaking love so an example of a LIST workout would be walking on an inclined treadmill on a speed of like 3 or 3.5 for about 30 to 40 minutes the benefits of HIIT and LIST are actually completely the same so it's totally up to what you prefer. I personally don't really like to sprint, but if I'm low on time, maybe, possibly, I'll do it. <laughs> but usually if I want to lose a bit of fat, I'll just walk. And the reason that I believe this is ideal for fat loss is because you don't actually need to take away the calories from your foods if you're adding a bit more cardio to your workouts. That in itself is going to shock your body. That is exactly how I like to do my to do my little cuts if I want to lose a bit of fat, which I love because I absolutely love food and I don't want to take my calories away from my food. This actually brings me to tip number four for you guys. The tip number four is add small things to your day that will make it will make a difference and make them a habit. For example, take your dog on a walk. Uh, walk to the grocery store, park further away in a parking lot. Anything that'll get your body moving a bit more than it usually does is great for fat loss. Little things like this actually add up big time in the end, especially if you're trying to keep this sustainable and more like a lifestyle rather rather than just like a phase you're going through. It's about being a bit more active and moving, getting up and moving your body in a way that it's really not used to. All right, I messed that up. That's tip number three. So this is actually tip number four. Tip number four is don't under eat. When I say this I mean the losing fat does not mean that you need to cut out fats and cut out carbs and all of that. There's no reason for that. In fact, that will actually have a reverse effect on your body if you cut those super drastic. An example of this is I've, I actually just started recounting my macros just for, I'm just going to do it for about a month because I feel like I've been under eating and I'm actually trying to lose fat right now but I do want to cut my macros and make sure I'm getting enough um, food. Yeah, I feel like I've been under eating for the past couple of months by accident, completely by accident. Just the fact that I'm, I'm working and I feel like I don't really have time to, to cook the way I used to. So with me counting my macros, I'm kind of I'm understanding that I need to be eating more. And now that I have been, I'm honest to God seeing more results than when I was under eating. I feel a little bit more lean than I did 17 days ago, which is when I started tracking my macro. Super important, give your body what it needs. If you're gonna change anything about your eating, up your protein intake. So tip number five is going to be cooking from home. Um, I actually watched a very interesting video from Chrissy Sella, I think that's how you say it. Um, she posted a video on YouTube a couple of days ago, I think. I'll actually link it below. She was basically eating from home and then eating the exact same thing out at a restaurant and showing the difference in calories between those two meals. And it's crazy how much more you can eat at home. If you're gonna eat at a restaurant, you actually have no idea what they're cooking with. They could be cooking with butter and oils that you wouldn't cook with at your house. If you're trying to lose fat, it's definitely smartest to meal prep and cook from home. It's a pain in the ass, but it's definitely worth it. And I'm not saying deny your friends when they ask you to go out to eat, but, but maybe try to pack a lunch or something for work or for school and pack snacks in your bag so you don't have to go and 
run through the Dunkin' and get hash browns or whatever for a snack, which is something I like to do. So tip number six is that there's not one way to go about doing this. You have to figure out what kind of works for you and what works for your lifestyle and some people I know are students, some people are working full time, so people do a bunch of different things. Basically figure out what works for your lifestyle. For example, for me personally, um, on days that I'm not working, I will probably not start eating until like 12 p.m. because I'm not even hungry until then and honestly I get so hungry at night that I'm super happy that I saved my calories for them because I'm like, okay, now I can be eating all this shit. Like, Honestly, I have a problem with eating at night. I freaking, I don't know what it is, but I love eating at night time. I get so hungry at night and I don't really wake up hungry, so I like to wait until my body feels hungry. So that just works for me, waiting, eating a bit later on in the day. If, I, if I'm working early in the morning, obviously I will pack my breakfast and eat whenever I'm hungry. So. And I wouldn't say intermittent fast because if I wake up hungry at like 9 a.m., I'm obviously gonna eat. That's just what works for me. You need to find what works, figure out what works for you. When it comes to exercise, figure out what works for you specifically. It's not strength training. Maybe take a Zumba class, figure out if you like that. Maybe try, um, just try different things. And there's yoga, Pilates, so many different things. So yeah, figure out what works for you and just enjoy yourself. Tip number seven is an obvious one and you've probably heard it a billion times, but it's up your water intake. Um, a lot of people think that they're drinking enough water, but they're actually not. Like, It's super important, it might even be the most important step in achieving any fitness goal that you have, whether it's losing fat, gaining muscle, anything. So don't forget to drink your water. It's super, super important in getting your body functioning the way it's supposed to be, so water. My eighth tip for you guys is another obvious one, but it's to sleep enough. Sleep is super important because it, it literally affects your whole entire next day. So yeah, honestly, I feel it when I don't get enough sleep. It's super, super important. Your cortisol, cortisol levels will be all out of whack. You probably know how much sleep that you need to feel um, ready for the day. Just get enough sleep for your body. Being well rested is super, super important when it comes to fat loss. So tip number nine and 10 are kind of, not really tips, but me just giving you some advice. So number nine is just trust the process, take it slow and steady. The slower you go, the more, the more sustainable this fat loss journey is going to be for you. Just be kind to yourself and really listen to your body throughout. Don't stress about losing fat, it's literally not the end of the world, which actually brings me to number 10, which is don't obsess about it. At the end of the day, you wanna be enjoying your life and doing the things that you love. You shouldn't be constantly thinking about this goal. Like, just, inc just incorporate these tips into your life slowly and steadily and you will absolutely see results. It's unnecessary to stress about it and to obsess about it. I promise results will come if you're consistent and you're making it a lifestyle. Um, just trust that your body will, will reward you for doing these things. So, um, so guys, that's it for me today. I hope this video helped anyone looking to lose fat. Yeah. I'll see you in the next one.